Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. In 1939, World War I was a recent memory, and the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor will occur in just two short years. Franklin Roosevelt is President of the United States, and the Great Depression which started in the 1920s, is starting to abate. In 1939, the population of the United States is over 130 million people, and the population of Rochester is 12,000. Also, in that year, a school was built on 33 acres of land between Chestnut Hill Road and Wakefield Street. It was designed with a bomb shelter in its basement and a giant clock tower which dominates the landscape clock tower reminds one of a classic New England meeting house. It has been named the most beautiful public high school in New Hampshire, and when it first opened, there was a citywide celebration. The September 14, 1939 edition of the Rochester Courier was larger than normal newspapers because it contained a special supplement commemorating the brand new school. There was an opening ceremony on September 9th with speakers expressing gratitude to the Spalding family, live music, and a patriotic flag raising. The following pictures are from when the school opened. The art room, the athletic field, the auditorium, cafeteria, classrooms, gymnasium, library, music room, the origins of the Spalding High School takes place in 1936. The Spalding family of Rochester were wealthy business owners and politically powerful. Two members of the family were elected governor of New Hampshire years earlier. They were also generous and always looking to help the city they lived in. The Spaldings composed a letter that some consider one of the most important communications in the city's history. Here are excerpts from this letter. It has been the desire and intention of the Spalding families for some time to contribute something to the city of Rochester that would be of public benefit. There is no question but that Rochester is badly in need of a modern high school building. Our schools have not kept abreast of the most modern practice. We will agree to give to the city, if required, a sum not exceeding $360,000, which together with the federal grant should be ample to cover the cost of the entire building, furnishings, and equipment. The Spalding family gave Rochester 15 days to accept the generous gift, or it would be withdrawn. Needless to say, the city accepted the gift from the Spalding family. The new Spalding High School would replace the old Rochester High School, which was built in 1901. Even though it was not that old, Rochester High School was too crowded. In 1938, There were only 492 student desks in the Rochester High School, but more than 500 students were enrolled in it. The city chose Chase Roy Witcher as the architect for the new school. He was a New Hampshire native, and during the first half of the 20th century, Chase was one of the most successful architects in New England. He designed many buildings, including several hospitals, in the Capitol Theater in Concord, His last project would be Spalding High School, which he completed right before his death. Most assume Spalding High School was named after the Spalding family, but technically it is named after Leon Spalding, who passed away in 1924. He was the oldest brother in the Spalding family. Walter Wood, who was a member of the building committee that steered the plans for the new high school, said the following about the new school and the Spalding family. While this is a memorial school, the Spaldings do not wish the building itself to be considered as a monument, but rather that the memorial should be in the lives of the young people who will here find added advantages and greater opportunity to prepare for successful living 
that will accomplish the greatest good for themselves and for their fellows. To this purpose, the Spalding High School is dedicated. Since its opening in 1939, the school has seen many changes, including double sessions in the 1970s due to overcrowding. It was even used as a junior high school in the 1980s for a while, when a new high school opened next to it. Fortunately, it is once again a high school, and should stay that way for the foreseeable future. This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com. And come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.